and we're going to press it on a point presser. I will quite often actually press first and then trim and grade and then press again because if, you're, if you've trimmed really, really close that it can become somewhat difficult to get the seam open without putting your fingers really, really close to the tip of the iron and you risk burning yourself. And so I will quite often press it open, then trim and grade, and then press it again. The, we're going to press it on the top of this point presser here. Press the tip of the collar, and then we're going to press the back collar seam. Before you put it on this point presser, you'll press it flat as you sewed it, and then you press it open on the point presser. That will help to define that edge for you, and embed those stitches in the seam. The other thing that the point presser does that's kind of nice, because it's a hard surface, it helps to give a really crisp edge to what you're stitching there. And so the seam gets the seam is pressed open. Look inside, make sure the edge is well defined. That the edge looks crisp there. Okay. And then when all is said and done and it's turned right side out, we don't want that under collar, and this is where I've made a different color, we don't want the under collar showing along the edge. It's very obvious here that it shows. We would like it to be slightly favored and underneath. In order for that to occur, after you've pressed this on the, on the um, point presser, if you will now up inside your collar, you're going to take and press the seam now along that outside style edge. And you can't get clear of the tip, but just reach up there as, as far as you can and press that style edge, the seam towards the under collar. And by pressing that seam towards the under collar, it helps to define that style edge and it will help to favor it. Don't go clear to the tip, not only because the iron will get in there, but we just spent quite a bit of time trying to get that tip to curl. And if you press it flat on a flat surface, you're going to take that curl out that we just spent time getting in. Okay. We want to try to get that tip out as, as close as we possibly can. Uh, one way that works really well, if you will just take a needle and thread, and pull out. you are going to, remember that little stitch that went across that little one millimeter stitch? I'm going to come up from inside my collar here and bring that needle and thread between the seam allowance. I'm coming out between the seam allowance on one side of that one millimeter stitch and then I'm going to turn around and go back on the other side of that one millimeter stitch. And so I've come out. I leave my thread tail there, do not pull it all the way through. And then I turn around and come back in right in that one millimeter stitch and get the needle going back in between the middle of the collar there. And this is going to create for me a little thread handle that I can pull on. 
Maravilhoso. So I pull that color right side out. I've got these the little threads, and if I just very gently pull on that thread handle, it will help me to pull that collar or that corner out. Another technique that you can use is take your pin, and you can use your pin to very gently, along the seam allowance, pull the seam out. You have to be very careful as you do this that you're actually catching the stitches, not grabbing your fabric, but actually getting in there between it, getting a hold of the stitch, and pulling that stitch out so that you get your fabric pulled out to as close as a tip as you can get it. When you get pretty close, if you will just take your fingers and fold that collar seam to seam. And all I'm doing is rotating my fingers, rubbing my fingers back and forth. So I'm kind of spinning the collar back and forth there. And what that does is helps to untangle, if you will, the seam allowance that is up inside of there and it will help you to get a sharp tip. And so you can see that I've created now a sharp tip to that collar. And I will now do the same thing with the other guy, get a thread tail through and pull it through. So the second tip is out. On this one I actually left the thread tail in because I want to show you something that you can do with that thread tail after um, when you're ready to, to work with it there. So we're now going to press this collar. The neckline edge, or this, the long neckline edge here, we can plus, press on a flat surface. And if you will press it collar facing side up, you can actually see that little favorite edge. And so you want to see just the very slightest, slightest bit of collar showing. You want the seam to be just barely to that bottom edge. A common mistake that people will make is, well, I want to make sure it doesn't show, and so they will pull it clear over, which pulls the collar out of position. Basically, if you remember, we press that seam allowance towards the collar facing, or the under collar. And so if you just turn and press this, it just about auto favors, and you get just that little teeny tiny rim. You can see that little tiny rim of orange that's showing there on the bottom. Okay. Again, we do not want to press the tip though. Notice that tip is still curling up. So we are going to take this tip and now press it over a ham because we want it to continue to curl down. So look very carefully and then just get it over the ham. Barely make sure if you'll just use your finger and just roll it again, roll the fabric between your fingers so that your under color is barely rolled under. And now I'm going to press that on a ham. Which is helping to main that curl, maintain that curl that we worked so hard to get in the first place. And so the tip of your collar gets pressed fashion fabric out. Again, it would be best if you to have a press cloth there. It would be difficult for you to see what I'm doing with a press cloth covering up what I'm sewing though, so I'm not going to use a press cloth. And this is actually just a sample anyhow. It's not going to go on a shirt. It's just going to be a collar that gets made. Okay. And you need to do both tips. Do the same thing on both tips. Be sure you get that pulled out so that the collar facing just barely, barely is rolled under. And press that tip. Now we're going to do another check here. And ideally, again, these tips should curl up. The collar should not want to lay flat. It should want to roll up, which it does. Okay, It wants to roll up, remember, because we pulled the collar facing out, or the under collar out, so that my green piece of fabric here is actually shorter 
than my orange piece of fabric, so it's tending to pull those edges up, which is exactly what we want to have happen. Okay. Take your color, line it up, make sure that your color tips are the same length. It will look really funny when you make your shirt if one color is long and one color is short because they're going to come out of your neck at center front and be close to each other. And So you want to make sure that as you sewed that they are the same length and that your tips are the same size and they look about the same. So when you're pleased with them and both tips are the same, okay, then we are ready to either edge stitch or top stitch the style edge. You will, ed you will do whatever type of stitching it was you did on your button band and on the style edge of your cuffs. So if you have been edge stitching, you will edge stitch this edge. If you've been top stitching, you will top stitch it. And we are going to start at the neckline edge and go all the way around to the other neckline edge. We're not going to start at the center back and go with, with the grain anymore. It's been stabilized. It's got interfacing in it. It's been stitched. It shouldn't slip or slide on us. And so we're just going to stitch around that. All right, so line up the collar for either edge stitching or top stitching. Remember, edge stitching will be an eighth of an inch or, or less away. Top stitching will be a quarter of an inch or more with whatever it was you were doing. And you're going to stitch around that outside edge. Now remember when we first sewed this, we took one stitch across the corner. When you're edge stitching and top stitching, you will not. You will just turn that corner. And I left the little pull thread in on one side so you can see the difference. As I'm turning this corner, I'm having to hand wheel and push a little bit because there is such a teeny tiny little bit of fabric on the feed dog, it doesn't tend to want to pull very well. So you saw I had to work with that a little bit to get it to go. As we head to the other side here, and again, kind of hold on to this, give it a little bit of pull and pressure because we do still have collar and collar facing collar and under collar that are two different lengths, one being pulled out a little bit shorter than the other, so give it a little bit of pressure as you pull, as you sew. Okay. Now, if you, had, you, if you use the thread tails and you kept them in, when you come towards that collar and you get right to the tip, and you turn that corner, I've now got a handle that I can hold or pull on. And notice how much easier this corner was to sew by just pulling that handle and getting that stitching to be held in place. All right, so the collar has been edge stitched. Once that's done, now go ahead and just pull the thread tail out. You don't need that anymore, but it served a purpose that was quite helpful with that. All right, back to the board.